Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today's topic are Elastic Cache, DMS that is Database Migration Service, and SCT Schema Conversion Tool. So these all topics are not exactly database but related to database. These are the services which you would need while working with DBs. So we'll be exploring these three things in more detail. The agenda for today's class is overview to Elastic Cache, set up Elastic Cache in AWS, access Elastic Cache from EC2 instance, overview to DMS that is Database Migration Service, create source and target endpoints, create a DMS task, overview of SCT that stands for schema conversion tool and then SCT installation and create a SCT project. So this agenda covers three topics and we'll be exploring them uh, one by one. So starting with the first one elastic cache. So as I said that between the user and the database this is an additional layer and this is helpful when you are accessing data frequently. That means the more frequent data you can find it in the uh, cache itself and if it will not find in the cache in that case it will uh, go to the database and it will fetch the data from there okay so it is a distributed in memory cache environment in the cloud we, we call it as in memory because that's why it is faster because when you are querying the database database will take some time to fetch the data from the hard disk or from where the data is stored. On the other side, your elastic cache is in memory storage. That means whatever is more frequent data that will be kept in the memory for easy and fast retrieval. It provides a high performance, scalable, and cost effective caching solution. It makes it easy to deploy and manage a distributed cache environment. So when we say distributed, that means behind the scene, it is available on multiple system. Because suppose you are dealing with a large amount of data, that means your processing is distributed. Maybe your database is also distributed. In that case, the cache solution you are looking for should also be distributed in nature. So that if my processing is happening on multiple machines parallelly, that means we should be able to access that cache parallelly on multiple machines. So in that manner, uh, this one is distributed in nature. And it can be used to enhance user experience with web application. As I explained, like when user is trying to access some data and if user is accessing the same data again and again, in that case, instead of fetching the same data from database, it should provide the data from the cache. First time it may go to database because first time there is nothing in the cache. The user requested for something. So it will go to database. It will fetch the data from there and it will put that data into the cache. That means the next time, second time, if you will try to access the same data again, this time it will not send your request to the database. Rather, it can provide you the result directly from the cache. And AWS is providing two, uh, you can say, two type of elastic cache that is Redis and Memcache. So you don't have to like remember these names because when you will be creating the elastic cache, it will provide you the option there and you can uh, choose it accordingly. So before we move towards the practical things, in case you are having any doubt on this first slide, you can ask me. In the meantime, let me log in into my AWS console. Okay, seems like my password is wrong. Let me go back.
फाइव टू नाइन ओके सो आई एम लॉग्ड इन इन टू माई एडब्ल्यू कंसोल एंड यस्टरडे वी क्रिएटेड वन टेबल अंडर डायनमो डीबी राइट which is not there as of now because usually after the class i clean up the resources created during the class so you can also follow the same practice once you are done with your uh, practicals you can remove those resources so we'll be going for elastic cache okay so you can see that there is uh, no elastic cache available as of now so we will be creating one as of now you can see that no redis cluster found so i will be clicking on create redis cluster and here you can see the type you want to go with easy create where you don't have to uh, choose the options i mean it will go with the recommended best practices or configure in configure and create a new cluster <laughs> that means you have to see all the configuration and restore from backup in case you have a uh, backup available from redis for for the cluster you can just restore it back in our case the option i think the first option would be the best for now the next one is what type of configuration you are looking for are you looking for production one or dev and test purpose or demo purpose i think demo should be good because you can see the configuration is very small very less 0.5 gb of ram and up to 5 gb of network performance and cache point for t4g dot micro so basically for our learning purpose let's go with this demo one and let's come down cluster information it's asking for so i can provide my redis cluster there is a description automatically given easy created demo cluster on this if you want to change you can change that cluster for learning purpose okay you can change it if you want otherwise you can skip it it's completely optional after that there is a connectivity part you can say networking part so you have to create a subnet group so subnet group as the name indicates it would be a group of multiple subnets maybe two subnets or more than that right so you can give any name i can give my rds subnet group okay for <laughs> for learning point of view i'm always giving my ec2 instance my redis cluster my security group right but in real time scenario when you are actually working for a project actually working for a company you should give a meaningful name not like my my bucket or my ec2 instance rather give some meaningful name so that if anyone else is working in your team they should understand what's the purpose of that server or what's the purpose of that bucket or role or anything okay so you can see that we have given a subnet group name description is optional leave it vpc id we have only one so it will be auto selected you don't have to do anything and after that you have to select the subnets you can see that selected all all six subnet are selected so for multi az high availability mode choose ids for at least two subnets from two availability zones in the table below so you can go with even single availability zone but if you are looking for high availability options high availability i can say service in that case at least two subnet you should choose and those two subnet should be from two different availability zone as of now we have six availability zone us east 1a b c d e f there are six availability zone and there are six unique subnet ids as you can see here and every subnet has a different uh, you can say ip ranges so by default it has selected all six but in case you want to change p 
click on manage and will select only two suppose i'm going with a and d and choose okay a d and f how oh. where is f okay f is also selected okay so i'm going with two availability zones us east one a and us east one d okay tags for subnet group as you know it's always optional and these are tags for your cluster so we are all good click on create Okay, so it is uh, the current status is creating it will take some time and what else other things are looks good okay now the point is how to use it database we can use like we have a url we have a username we have password there are many tools uh, where you can configure your database connection and you can use it easily you can create table you can load some data you can delete the table and all similarly how to use this redis cluster so even this redis cluster will have a url and that would be used for like accessing it so i am coming back to pdf and i will show you how to access this so this one how to create a redis cluster the ui is little different because this one was taken few months back and in the meantime they have changed the ui but anyway ultimately it will be asking few things like what are the name of your cluster what is the engine version you can go with the latest one port is standard you don't have to change it 6379 is the standard port for redis cluster then there is a you can say parameter group that will be always default selected node type cache dot t dot micro i think the same is selected by us now number of replica is zero so number of replica in the sense like if you want to keep duplicate copy of your data you can go with uh, you can say number of replica otherwise you are okay if you want to go with multi az solution you can select this multi az one otherwise it's okay to go with single availability zone okay so these are subnet group which we have already talked about where you can provide a subnet group name vpc id will be auto selected you can provide a meaningful description and from your list you can select at least two subnet ids so as you can see here ap southeast 1a and ap southeast 1b as per the screenshot otherwise whatever we did now we have selected us east 1a and us east 1d okay these are other settings and finally how to use it so you can use it directly on the ec2 instance so first of all you need to install something because whatever you installed is redis server in order to use it you have to install redis client as well so open the ec2 instance and execute this command which says sudo amazon hyphen linux hyphen extras install redis 6 this way you will be able to install redis client on your ec2 instance or wherever you use it in case your web application is running on ec2 instance that means you will be using redis over there so you can install over there okay so before we proceed with more practicals i would like to stop here in case you are having any doubts till now you can ask me in the meantime i will check whether it is ready it is still creating let me duplicate this tab and I will start my EC2 instance. So I will go to EC2 console. There is no instance running, that is fine. We'll start our yeah, my first EC2 instance that is in stopped state because anyway, we have a uh, alarm in place the alarm will make sure that in case it's not uh, heavily used that means the cpu utilization is less than some threshold i think two percent or five percent 
in that case it will automatically stop your server so let's start this so my ec2 instance is starting now and what about elastic cache it is still creating